Many thanks for keeping us company again. A very good Monday evening to you tonight. We are talking about the Jubilee ship that is uh, seemingly leaking. And the question you are asking, if it's leaking, how far will it go? I'm in studio with Daniel Orogo, he will help us to understand. He's a political analyst. He's, he's here to help us to understand whether it's really leaking and what can it be done. Good evening. Good evening. Niko Salama. Karibu sana. Now, um, for the past two weeks, we have seen uh, bad things happen to Jubilee Party, and most of the people say it's because of the handshake. We'll be getting to understand whether the handshake has caused uh, the Jubilee ship to have a hole that's now leaking some waters and will it sink. Now, uh, we begin with a David Morade issue. Was uh, David Morade forced to step aside as a result of uh, battling the DP, uh, D D Deputy President William Ruto? Well, thanks, Hillary. Um, I think Morade's issue, um, first of all, let me say, you know, it's, it's quite difficult to comprehend whether he took a personal decision to resign out of his seat as the vice chair. But that is what I say that, you know, sometimes we really need to understand how the political parties operate. Then it's quite easy um, to judge um, somebody's movement or right. somebody's decision. Right. But you realize that, um, uh, the, the vice chair has got a very big role to play in the party. Right. He deputizes right. the chair, uh, the chairperson of Jubilee, right. and to some extent closer to the party leader, right. very close to the party leader. Yes. So, first of all, um, he's, he cannot speak for himself. He speaks about the party. Right. You also realize that um, their demeanor with the Secretary General of the party has been the same. They've been reading from the same script, in that even advising those who have ambitions for 2022 not to um, really put their cards so much and their hopes into vying. Mm -hmm. So I think his statement, um, their, their stories, their theories about his resignation uh, but I think I understand that I believe what he wrote and gave to the public through the media right. that he took a personal decision to resign from the party right. um, so that he would pursue um, advisory from the Supreme Court at a personal level. Right. He also intimated that he, um, he is speaking for himself, right. not speaking for the party organ, the party structure. And all the views that he has is subject to his own um, his own view. Right. So I think from there, uh, that is how far I can understand his decision, right. the political party leadership. Right. Now we know who is the head of the party, but then uh, why hasn't the president reprimanded him uh, publicly? And uh, because this is the question people are asking, uh, he is the leader. Why aren't he, is he not calling his party or his house in order to maybe clarify things? Well, if, if, if you can remember, um, in between the last quarter of last year, Jubilee had organized for a parliamentary group meeting, PG, mm -hmm. and it failed twice to materialize. Um, one, uh, the 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 Jubilee Party majority leader um, and the whip said that the, the president's diary is conflicting twice with the day that the party uh, parliamentary group was um, called. I think, uh, like I've said, Jubilee is a ruling coalition. Yeah. And what we predict is an example because he it's the party that is bequeathed with fulfilling the manifesto right. is the party that Kenyans are um, hoping that would actually uh, fulfill the promise of the Big Four agenda right. and subsequently um, roll out the handshake that, that, that we right now is like the, 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 big, the big Five agenda, right. the fifth agenda. So um, I think there is a lot within the president's diary um, insofar as trying to uh, indicate 
please and maintain a harmonized party. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, being able to tell Kenyans that, you know, I am the president of the Republic of Kenya, and as much as I'm a Jubilee Party leader, I serve the interest of 40 million Kenyans True. and over. So that intricate balance is quite difficult for the president. He's torn in between, mm -hmm. trying to maintain um, a harmonized party and uh, fulfilling the needs of uh, you know the party members and the party followers. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, coming out to tell Kenyans that even as much as I am the leader of Jubilee, but I'm not only the leader of Central Kenya. I'm not only the leader of Jubilee. I am also the leader in areas that are voted ODM. Mm -hmm. and voted P, uh, all other parties, yeah. uh, you see, a money national congress. So it, it's a very delicate balance that I understand the president is trying to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, balance so that it doesn't go out of hand. All right. Now, would you say uh, the public humiliation that has been shown to the DP, of course, they're going to Kisumu and the, pa the birthday party of Baba, would you say it has scaled to a new height? Well, um, I always try to appear objective um, uh, in, in these matters, uh, but what what there there are very there's a turnaround of so many events within a short time, um, and the political landscape, or rather, there is tectonic movement within the political landscape. Mm -hmm. First of all, the 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 handshake, the ninth March handshake, and the subsequent gazettement of um, the Unity Advisory Task Force, or what people call the Brilliant Bridges Initiative, um, upset the whole political arrangement within Jubilee, right. because it brought in the idea of accommodating the opposition leader and the former prime minister in consultation within running of the government activities. Sure. And the question about succession politics. In that, I think you saw uh, the statement that the Senator Renga was making in Kisumu, mm -hmm. that you see, Unajua, you know, you know, uh, 2023 is within the hands of God, but you know, the president knows. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of um, uh, political proxies and all this kind of proclamation mm -hmm. uh, is not sitting well with the URP wing, mm -hmm. simply because the president, his pronouncements, mm -hmm. you know, and long time these guys the brothers, we call people brothers, my brother, mm -hmm. um, you know, they would uh, sit uh, most of the time together, put on the same tie, you know, when announcing the cabinet. Yeah. But probably, suddenly, things have changed. Things have changed. So right. anybody else would be worried. Even the, the URP side and deputy president would be worried what is taking place. Right. And also the fact that the president is not really forthright in saying who his successor mm -hmm. will be. Yeah. But Hillary, what, what I am really in all in the midst of all these happenings, mm -hmm. I am not seeing where the youth are sitting. And it's so worrying that there's a lot of political shifting and political movement. Right. But the young people and strong youth leaders are remaining mm -hmm. to be relegated as spectators. And this is not really very well when it comes to political governance, when it comes to inclusion. And the reason as to why, I only fault BBI because of one reason. Mm -hmm. Amongst the members, I, I think there are 14 members that are sitting within that team. Mm -hmm. You realize that mm -hmm. even the sitting senators, mm -hmm. the likes of Emos Wako. There's no uh, youth there. There's, there's no youth representation. In, and yet, you realize that during electoral violence, right. young people are either victims or perpetrators of violence. They they in, the yeah, they're, they're in the forefront of being used as the foot soldiers mm -hmm. for the politicians. Right. And also, when they are targeted, they are targeting their fellow young people. True, true. So I think that is the only reason I fault the BBA for deliberately mm -hmm. missing to include young people. And that means mm -hmm. leaving out the voice of youth. Right. In national reconciliation and national cohesion. Right. Yeah. Now, do you think uh, Mr. Morade was right, or it's just a sheer ignorance of the constitution, saying that the DP is not qualified to vie for presidency come 2022? 
Well, well, I, I, I think uh, on that, uh, Mr. Murade misled the, the, the country because I think he was quoting Article 243 or something. You know, that article or which arti whatever article it is limits the deputy president mm -hmm. from running more than two terms as a deputy president. Right. So that if the deputy president runs for two terms and decide now to go for presidency, he is allowed to run. True. But that he was quoting what unites the presidency. And the president means the activities of the office of the president and the mm -hmm. deputy president. Mm -hmm. So I think he, whether you seek advisory or whether not, and you realize that Article 165, you do not need to go to the Supreme Court. Even the High Court can interpret that matter. True. So I think it's, it's a political scheming. Right. And that's why I said we really need to be very objective. And what would it take? For the president to just announce right. that my preferred candidate is still the deputy president, I have not changed. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, following President Uru Kenyatta's statement in Mombasa, uh, what he said about the the uh, Mount Kenya region leaders who accused him of neglecting the region. Now, do you think the Mount Kenya region has been neglected in terms of development? <laughs> uh, again, again, that's what I'm saying. It's a very, very dangerous political pronouncement. You see, first of all, on, on equitable sharing of resources, we have a blessing of the de devolved system of government, right. which takes away 15% of the national budget, goes to the counties. Now, it's 15% and above that goes to the counties. So it means, first of all, that the presentation of a group called Mount Kenya Caucus or something was, was outrightly wrong because according to the division of re revenue allocation, you realize that uh, Central Kenya receives equal funding as um, some counties in Western Kenya. So that means the county government of Kiambu, the county government of Murana, the county government of Nyandarwa, the county government of uh, all those counties that are within uh, Central Kenya and even some regions of Meru receive equitable sharing of resources. So I think that was wrong. It was a political miscalculation. But the fear, you know, Mount Kenya and the House of Mumbi is in a panic. Right. And the panic is that you remember 24 years rule of Moy when they were not in government. Mm -hmm. And here you are now telling Mount Kenya that they would again Go back. wait for 10 or 15 years mm -hmm. without the point person. Right. So I think instead of Mount Kenya caucuses coming out clearly and saying our fear is the fact that mm -hmm. we do not have a presidential candidate in 2022. Right. They are beginning to go around the corner and begin to issue I matters of you know economy. But again, I would like to, and, and I wish you had somebody uh, from Mount Kenya, of course, in this panel. Mm -hmm. You asked that the likes of Moses Kuria, who said, you know, uh, we feel that Mount Kenya has been neglected when it comes to national, you know, national sharing of, of, of resources. Mm. A, a statement he backtracked and said he was misquoted. By who? The public, no. of course. Something that you go out and say in the media is well documented. It's within the public domain. Mm -hmm. Now, you realize that the deputy president has been making inroads in, in, in central Kenya. Very and true. And what what does he do? Launching of projects. Yeah, but I was uh, reading a certain yes. article, and some of these projects have derailed. Others have stopped. And uh, if I could mention a few examples, we have forty three kilometers Marua Kima Kiamariga Road, uh, four point six billion shillings, which is a 40, 47 kilometers uplands Gidunguri Road, among many others. In Kenya, there is a project. In Nyeri, there is a project. But then, they are complaining. That is why I'm telling you, it's still, it's, it's just about a political setup because this, this is a region that, you know, if you look at the track record of development, I've hosted, this is the third president coming from the region. Right. You understand? And by, by our political uh, landscape, wherever the president comes from, 
it's it's by nature equated to be development oriented but then there are, we've had three from central kenya yeah. so i think relatively to other areas it's quite much uh, developed sure. so that is why i'm telling you that the mount kenya caucus would come why would they just come out clearly and state their fear mm -hmm. so that they would begin to attract partnership no. by candidates who really want to vie right you understand mm -hmm. yeah. now speaking of the fear was there an MOU between president uhuru and his deputy william ruto well well, well in the resignation of david murathe he said very well mm. and he even challenged and dare mm -hmm. anybody that if there was indeed a memorandum of understanding mm -hmm. he dared somebody to bring it in public Mm -hmm. So I would like to tell you that there is no MOU and Ed and Duale through one of the days. It dailies, was a friendship promise. It was a friendship promise and I think uh, some of these things, you know, um, uh, are within the public domain that, you see, the tie, the glue that holds the, the rift mm -hmm. and in central Kenya, mm -hmm. first of all was about the issues to clear the international issues. That is ICC, which right. I think was 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 a very hot issue by that time. True, and the fact that there was need to bring reconciliation and cohesion mm -hmm. between um, uh, our brothers from Kikuyus and our brothers from Kalenjin living in the rift. So I think uh, it was a good issue, and that is why I am I am challenging the the handlers of deputy president if they are genuine mm -hmm. that the country and. I quote what the deputy president said. He said that never again would anybody shed blood because of election. True. And I think it's high time that he just say that, you see, for the purposes of me being you know, realistic and appealing to Kenyans, I would, I would support the handshake because it's bringing cohesion. Mm -hmm. It's bringing, you know, unity within, uh, within the country. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, it is my view that those who are advising the deputy president mm -hmm. would actually advise him. And, and, and if somebody is listening, right. the deputy president needs to do a very wise thing. Include yourself. And he said in Kisumu that Ukiona Uhuru, this side, Nababa this side, you are hustler ako katikati. And you see, that is a very nice statement. I, I, I wish that he would take it and run away with it. Mm -hmm. Because if he doesn't take it and run away with it, Wetangula will take it and run away with it, or Mudabari will take it and run away with it. Then it will become difficult right. for him to convince Kenyans that I stood for mm -hmm. handshake because handshake. it was meant for cohesion. True. So I think he should, should just be very smart and take it away. All right. As we finish, we are out of time. Now, do you think the jubilee ship is leaking? It's actually sinking uh, because the leaking started a long time ago, and, uh, and, and the failure to hold two parliamentary group meetings. Right actually prove you know pgs and, and and neck meetings are very serious uh you know party activities mm -hmm. because then it becomes a point where both parliamentarians and the leaders empty out you know vent out what their concern is mm -hmm. but up to now it has not happened mm -hmm. and there are there are declare there are v so many declarations All right. you know the likes of murathe making statements rafael Truju still joining on the same statements mm -hmm. Maina Kamanda still joining on the same statement so I think the ship is actually sinking and if it if it doesn't get rescued then I think it, it's 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 a dead and it's it's dead by right now as we speak mm -hmm. but then what mistake happened was dissolving the parties right and I think nobody should have gone towards that direction do we have a solution the solution is just right now i think um the president would just hold the house in order right and reprimand the members of parliament that you know this political bickering must end mm -hmm. we have a big four agenda to do mm -hmm. and please support the president in uniting the country through the, through the building bridges initiative or the handshake mm -hmm. then if it reaches around 2019 or 2020 <laughs> everybody's free Right. Because that then the political rounds would have begin to take place then election, actually campaigns and all of but right now I think let him reprimand the leaders mm -hmm. for him to have an easy time in fulfilling his manifesto. Do you think it's about time he told us who is supporting come twenty twenty two? No. I, I don't think I don't think for him this this would turn uh, it would just turn everything upside and down. Right. But then I cannot conclude the show by again reiterating that 
The president had got a deal with the youth in this country, mm -hmm. a very big deal. What was the deal? Building of stadiums, mm -hmm. revamping some of these technical universities, yeah. you know, acknowledging the artistry uh, industry in this country, and improving youth lives through youth employment. So you think, he's, others are saying that he's still young. You know, the way he appears, he ran, he ran a campaign through, you know, youth, you know, youth uh, phase. Right. So I think one of the things young people need to do is we need to give the president sleepless nights right. in terms of asking him to fulfill True. the agenda of young people. Not for any other thing, mm -hmm. but to make sure that he fulfill the, the manifesto that mm. is youth friendly. All right. Many thanks for coming here out of time. And I see this discussion might not end here. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, coming up next is why Mashariki. Uh, stay tuned for that. He has been my guest, Daniel Orogo. My name is Dereva Hilary. Have yourself a very good night.